Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to discuss about the uh, SIP methods in detail. So let's discuss about these SIP methods. So in my previous lecture, I discussed about the SIP basic call flow and the transaction sessions and the dialogue as well. So in this, we'll discuss about the SIP methods. Let's start it. So we have these six SIP, met SIP methods mainly that is invite, act, buy, cancel options and a register message so what invite message will do invite message this is a message which is being invited to participate in a multimedia session so this will be your first message that will be from user agent client to user agent server then ACK is another message it confirms that a client has received a final response to an invite request so ACK will come after 200 okay like in this way this is your invite message first one 100 trying 180 ringing 200 okay and then there is an acknowledgement so this acknowledgement it confirms that final response which is this one 200 okay has been received for this for this invite message for this invite request okay then we have a buy message that is what it's what it will do it terminates an existing session means the session which is already established like an rtp stream is established already then we will use this buy message it terminates an existing session it can be sent by anyone whether it could be by from phone a or it could be from phone b it means it can be from user agent client or user agent server then we have a cancel request cancel request will be there once there is a pending request like there is no acknowledgement and no 200 okay till now then user agent a wants to terminate the request then it will just send the cancel map message this one it doesn't terminate the session which is already accepted it will send the buy message once it's once the message is accepted and it wants to terminate it then we have the options message that is it queries the capabilities of server it will ask for the capabilities like what's the codec you are you are having and then i can negotiate then we have this register request it registers the user agent with the registrar server of a domain it we can send this register message as well then we have additional sip request methods that has started with info prac let's discuss about all these info practical publishing detail so info method if you just want to send more information within already established dialogue so if dialogue is already established and it wants to send more information then it can send it under the info message then we have a prac message so if you want to acknowledge all your 1xx message this provisional response means 1xx message if you found if you need a response of this particular 1xx provisional message then you need to enable the prac then we have this subscribe and notify subscribe will tell a remote node to look for a certain event it will check for a certain event and notify it to, to respond when that certain event occurs so in subscribe it will look for that particular event and in notify it will respond when that particular event will occur in update message it will update the parameters of a session setup like the if you want to update anything anything like codec or any other thing message it is mainly for the sip instant messaging refer if you want to just refer that particular user agent with the to the any other user agent like to refer one user agent to communicate with another user agent it will just send a refer method then we have publish to push information to a compositor or present server so we can say that uh, uh, in the presence like in the presence or we can say in unity if if ucm and unity is connected with the help of sip trunk configuration and whenever there is a new voicemail on your unity then it will just send a publish request to lit up the light on that particular phone and if that user uh, user just check that message then it will send a publish message again to off the particular that red light on the particular phone then we have these sip responses that is starts from 1xx till 6xx so we have 1xx messages 2xx 3xx 
four x x and five x x and six x x messages. So let's discuss about these messages. What this one x x message means? This is an informational one. Request received and continuing to process a request, and it can be under hundred trying, one eighty ringing. 181 call is being forwarded or 183 session progress so 100 trying so as soon as the party b let's just discuss in this way this is party a and this is party b so as soon as like if uh, phone a is sending an invite then as soon as b receives the invite it should send something so that a got to know that my invite is reached to the phone b in this case phone b will send a 100 trying to this phone a so that your phone a will not send an invite again so after this 100 trying there will be 180 ringing they these are the one xx messages these are provisional messages then we have a success message which is 2xx so after this 180 it will send a 200 okay message this 200 okay means this is our final response for that invite which is being sent in the first message itself this is 200 okay or 202 acceptable message then we have 3xx messages which is mainly used for the redirection like if user agent 1 wants to redirect it to particular user agent any other user agent then we mainly use 3xx messages that is 300 multiple choices or moved permanently or moved temporarily it will send the message according to the needs <clears throat> then we have 4xx messages which is having a client error the request contains bad syntax or cannot be fulfilled at this server that means if the client is busy or if it maybe it's on another call maybe unauthorized state maybe busy so it will send 401 unauthorized in case if it is not authorized not acceptable if is busy somewhere proxy authentication required if that is mainly for the authentication 486 busy request terminated not acceptable so these all are the messages under 4xx which is the client error then we have a server error and the global failure in server error server failed to fulfill an apparently valid request so if the gateway is not available if service is not available then it will send 502 bad gateway or 503 service unavailable then we have 6xx if you are getting a 6xx message that means it's a global failure nothing will work request is invalid 600 busy everywhere or we can say 603 decline so nothing will work if you are getting 6xx messages after this we have three things that is early offer delay offer and the early media so we have main these three things let's let's discuss about the early offer first this is phone a and this is phone b if phone a is sending an invite message and if it will send the sdp message in the initial invite sdp means uh your media capabilities port number codex if it send in the initial invite and after invite there will be 100 trying 180 ringing and the 200 okay so in this 200 okay phone b will negotiate its media capabilities and will send the information in 200 okay so 200 okay at this stage contains sdp messages so this is the after negotiation so this this is what we call it as early offer now let's discuss about delayed offer so delayed offer means this is phone a this is phone b and once phone a is sending something in invite like in, it is sending invite message it will not contain this sdp message it will not send its media capabilities so phone b will send 100 trying 180 ringing and then 200 okay in the 200 okay phone b will send its media capabilities in 200 okay so now phone a will negotiate and it will send the negotiated media capabilities in the acknowledgement so here you can see in the delayed offer phone a is negotiating and in early offer phone b is negotiating and in 200 okay phone b is sending negotiated media capabilities in delayed offer 200 okay is sending the sdp messages like contains the all the information for phone b and in the acknowledgement it is sending the negotiated media capabilities so acknowledgement will contain sdps now let's see what it's written 
so an initial sip invite that is sent with sdp is called an early offer and the session initiator sends its capabilities including codex in the sdp in the initial invite this is your initial invite this method allows the device to choose the preferred codec for the session so this method allows phone b to choose preferred codec and early offer this is the default method which is we using in the originating git delayed offer and initial sip invite that is sent without sdp this is without sdp no sdp in this initial invite then the session initiator doesn't send right it is not sending any capabilities but it will wait for the cold device cold device is b to send capabilities first so it will send the capabilities in this 200 ok message and for example it will send the list of codecs by the call device and then the calling device to choose the codec now calling device is a it will choose the codec and it will send it under the under this acknowledgement now we have next thing that is early media early media it allows the sending of media from the cold party or a server to the caller even before the call is accepted so this is the example of your caller tune on your phone so if you can say if you are calling someone and they have caller tune enabled on their phone so as soon as you make a call you are not hearing any ringtone you you are just hearing that uh, that local uh, caller tune which is available on that particular phone so that's what we can call it as early media early media will come under the 183 session progress instead of 180 ringing it will send 183 session progress with sdp messages which contains the information about that media which needs to be played on this particular local user so even before the call is accepted that is an early media and cisco gateway supports early media for both early offer as well as delayed offer call now we have next thing that is sip trunk options ping so this option is like showing after 8.5 cucm and this option request lights outside the context of the call it is not depend on the calls being placed on the sip trunk so what it means this sip trunk options ping it is just an option and you just need to enable it like this one you just need to put a check mark and then it will enable what's the main purpose of this options ping it is mainly used to detect failures even if no calls are present like it will just check whether that particular sip destination server is available or not if it is not available then it will mark it as not available it mainly allows any calls to be rerouted more quickly sip option method prevents calls from incurring large time out and retry delays let's see how it can do it so there is an option if you just enable that option then it will like if it is just sending the options message and it is not giving in not, not getting the response from sip pra then it will mark that sip pra as unavailable now it's sending the options request to the sip peer b if it is available it will mark peer b as available so every other new call which is like coming from uc ucm it will not go to this sip pra it will directly go to the sip peer b and it will just saves a lot of time like this one you can see that there is an option of sip options ping you just need to enable it you just need to tick mark enable ping options to monitor destination status for trunks with service type none that is default one as you can see it's the same thing written over here with options ping feature it will send sip options to every destination peer to detect availability if the destination is unavailable that means 408 request timeout or a service unavailable it will mark as an unavailable one if remote destination is available any other response rather than 503 or 408 will come and then your call manager will mark that peer as available one and for that ucm will send new invite to the only to the available remote destination peers it will not send to the remote destination which is unavailable at that particular time so now we have the sip configuration on gateway how what are the commands we need to use on the gateway so that uh, it is configured as a sip protocol let's see that so here you can see that there are so many commands like voice service voip this is the first command and then you can just enter it in the voip mode this one then you can just enter the sip that means now sip is enabled on this particular gateway 
Then we have these common commands, session transport, UDP, bind control, source interface, bind media source interface. Just no shut, that means it will enable everything. The main things which we need to add this one, user authentication thing, that is CP user authentication. And in authentication, what could be the username and password? This one, authentication, username, this is your username, JDOI, and which, what is the password? Password, secret. So this is the username and password for the authentication mechanism. Then we have registrar server we need to add. So registrar DNS sip2.cisco.com and it expires in 3600 seconds. So DNS sip2.cisco.com it means this is the domain name of your registrar server. Then we have sip server DNS sip2.cisco.com. So you can enter the IP address here as well. And you can, if you are using FQDN, you can just enter this one, the same FQDN as well. Now you, you can mention this retry invite, whether uh, how many retry invites could be there, like retry invite two. So it will send a retry message twice. Retry response to buy two and the cancel to same thing. So it will send the retries only twice. Now let's discuss about this one in detail like dial peers voice 200 2000 ports dial peer voice 2001 dial peer voice so now <clears throat> you need to see we have created these dial peers so ports and voice ports dial pair as you know it will be in between gateway and your PSTN world this one as well and then you have a voice dial pair which is created between your gateway and your CUC so as we know this port style pair is between our gateway and the PSTN world as C we have two dial pairs that is ports and VoIP and we can configure it as inbound and outbound. So as soon as we can see it here, destination pattern, it means it's an outbound one. It could be on either side, two dot dot dot. That means it will be from 2000 to 2999. It can make a call to 2000 till 2999. Session protocol SIP V2, that is SIP version two. Session target SIP server. So why it is written as SIP server? Because we already configured the SIP server as this one. SIP server DNS SIP2.cisco.com. Even you can enter session target SIP server. Instead of SIP server, you can just enter SIP session target. D, uh, what's the DN name? SIP2. So you can enter session target SIP2.cisco.com or you can enter the IP address instead of this SIP server as well. And then DTMF relay, RTP, NTE, whether it is going to use the, which one, RTP, NTE or KPML. So we can just enter it here. Then we have next another one that is voice 2001 ports, destination pattern, same protocol, same session target is changed. Now session target IPv4 is changed 10.1.1.15. If this is not available, then it will check for this one. And how it will check it? It will be, it depends on this preference. So this command is same, DTMF relay, SIP notify. This is the one command preference one means this is of second priority. If nothing is comes like if we haven't added preference here, that means this dial pair has a top priority. If something is not working like the SIP server is down, then it will go to the next priority that is preference one. So it will go to this server. It depends on this preference one. You can see the destination pattern is same. Session target IPv4 is a different one. So if it jumps onto this dial pair, then it means the session target is this one, 10.1.1.15. Then we have the VoIP dial pair, dial pair voice 90 VoIP, destination pattern 9T. It means it will accept everything after nine, like a five digits, 10 digits, 12 digits, anything or everything. Then we have session target IPv4 address that is 192.168.1.100. It could be your COCM IP because we are creating a VoIP dial pair that could be between your gateway and your COC. Session protocol same that is SIP version 2. And then we have a DTMF relay RTP and TE, which is like we are already using RTP and TE on every switch. Like here, DTMF relay RTP and TE we are using. Here in this, we are using SIP notify method. Here we are using again DTMF, Relay, RTP, NTE. So these all are the commands which you need to put on your gateway. And for the COCM configuration, you just need to make a SIP trunk between your COCM and your gateway. For that SIP trunk, you need to create SIP profile as well as SIP trunk security profile. In the SIP trunk, you just need to mention the destination address, which could be your gateway IP address. So just mention the SIP 
server like this gateway IP address in your zip trunk and then it will communicate with this particular gate. So uh, if you have no idea about that zip trunk, how we can create it, how we can create zip profile and zip trunk security profile. So I have already uploaded the video on zip trunk configuration on CUCM, like how we can create zip profile, how we can create zip trunk security profile and how we can create the zip trunk and where we can enter the destination address of that particular gateway as well. So you can go and check out my video on that zip trunk, how we can add it and you can uh, like check all the configuration on CUCM. So I hope you really like this video. If you really like it, please like, share and subscribe it and please don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will be able to receive notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thank you.